Documentaries, they can be incredibly illuminating, pulling back the curtain to show us the reality of a situation and ideology, or just give us the chance to get to know a subject in a deep, intimate way. But sometimes the truth hurts a little too much. Today we're talking about some controversial documentaries that were banned. We're going to start things off with the sweatbox. So during the production of The Emperor's New Groove, Disney, like they used to do with many of their animated projects, wanted to do a making of a documentary. This 2002 film was directed by Trudy Styler, a documentarian and wife of Sting, who had originally been hired to make music for the movie. Now, the film didn't turn out exactly how Disney envisioned it. As everyone knows, Disney likes to be portrayed in a very particular way. They sugarcoat things. And when the higher-ups saw the finished product, they weren't too happy about it. The film was very transparent, showing exactly what it was like working for Disney at that time, really highlighting how the creative and the executives butted heads. And basically, there was a lot more drama involved than the happy, magical workplace environment Disney wanted to portray. So the film was never released, at least not officially. In 2012, it was leaked online by an 18-year-old cartoonist. Not sure how he got his hands on it, but it's floating around on the internet. The quality is pretty trash, though. It's safe to say we'll probably never see a proper version of this thing showing up on Disney Plus. You know what will show up though, officially, every single day? A new video from us. So hit that subscribe button, all right? You don't want to miss out on anything. Next up is the 1970 documentary, Let It Be. This is a pretty infamous film that was said to be the last nail in the coffin that led to the Beatles finally splitting up. The film is notoriously hard to find. It only had a very limited home video release in 1981. And even in this version, there was about an hour of footage removed from the original cut. So you can find rips of it online, but not in great quality, and you'll still not be seeing the full version. So why hasn't this doc ever gotten a proper home release or nowadays uh, available for streaming? Well, the band wasn't happy about it. Apparently, when they sat down to watch the original cut in 1969, they complained that there was too much John and Yoko stuff, too much dirty laundry that they didn't want being aired out to the public. And John Lennon in particular talked about how the film seemed to be edited and shot in a way that made Paul McCartney seem like the most important member of the band with everyone else, quote, just lying around. So a full hour of the runtime was chopped out before the doc was released for its limited theatrical showing. Forget not being allowed to watch it, the original cut of this movie may not even exist anymore. Traces of Death. So, this 1993 documentary is banned in the UK. Won't be the last one banned uh, in the UK on this list, by the way, spoiler alert. So I'm sure you've all heard of Faces of Death, one of the most controversial movies of all time, probably. When it came out in 1978, people actually thought it depicted real footage of people dying. Turns out most of that movie was actually recreated stuff, just done with a very convincing found footage kind of style. Traces of Death, though, is actually what Faces of Death marketed itself to be. All the footage used is of uh, real car accidents, real dead bodies. You can imagine what it consists of. It's a real uh, you know, family movie night kind of flick. But yeah, the UK has a lot stricter rules when it comes to violent images. So this thing was banned entirely. But what does banned really mean anymore when we have the internet, right? Yeah, it's still pretty readily available on the web. I skimmed through some of it in preparation for this video. And uh, yeah, not, not for me. I'm a big horror movie fan, but I like my horror firmly rooted in fiction. Thank you very much. Next, we have another documentary banned in the UK. This one actually having come out of the UK. Bare Fist, the sport that wouldn't die. This documentary was about a bare knuckle boxer named Lenny McLean. We follow his son, Jamie, seeing the story play out from his perspective. But the British Board of Film Classification refused to certify the movie on two separate occasions. They didn't want to glamorize bare knuckle boxing, and they also thought the film could lead to viewers uh, getting potentially lethal advice. Apparently there's a scene in the film where they talk about lacing their wraps with shards of broken glass. There's another movie that shows fighters covering their wraps with broken glass. Kickboxer. Yeah, remember the, the end, last fight in that movie? You know, they dip it in the, the glass. Van Damme. Is that movie banned in the UK? I doubt it. Next up 
is the 1969 documentary The Royal Family. This was a made-for-TV documentary that aired on BBC about Queen Elizabeth II and her family. There was over 40 hours of footage shot covering an entire year of her life, which was cut down to 110 minutes. I would have hated to be the editor on that project, especially back then without the kind of editing software we have now, and with how unexciting most of this footage had to have been. I, I read what's included in this movie, and you know, it's them eating breakfast, they watch TV, they have a barbecue. I'm not kidding, like, this is what goes on in this movie. The only entertaining part is there's uh, a scene apparently where Charles is practicing the cello and a string snaps and hits his younger brother Edward in the face. Honestly, if those are the best bits they could find though, it must have been a real slog putting this thing together. I bet there, there must have been far more juicy stuff that they just weren't allowed to use in the cut though, right? But why aren't you allowed to see this documentary today? Well, apparently some felt that the documentary revealed a little too much about the royal family. David Attenborough was quoted at the time saying that the film was in danger of, quote, killing the monarchy, the whole institution, depends on Mystique and the tribal chief in his hut. If any member of the tribe ever sees inside the hut, then the whole system of the tribal chiefdom is damaged and the tribe eventually disintegrates. The doc has never had a home release, but uh, it was just recently leaked on YouTube, and I think it's still up there, so check it out if this sounds entertaining to you. Next on the list is the 1967 documentary, Titicut Follies. This film was directed by Frederick Wiseman. It was a no-frills, up-close and personal look at the patients of Bridgewater State Hospital for the criminally insane in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. The camera crew didn't intervene in the goings-on, they just set up and shot what was going on, what they were observing, and what was documented was not pretty. Patients were mistreated and neglected, barely ever being bathed. The staff were shown to be rude, even bullying the patients at times. The crew spent 29 days filming at the location, and Wiseman edited the footage down to an 84-minute piece. And just days before the film was set to release at the New York Film Festival, the Massachusetts government stepped in. They wanted the film banned. Now, their argument was that the film violated the patient's privacy, but Wiseman had gone gotten their permission. And the government also claimed, though, that he hadn't upheld his contract to allow the state to have control over the editing of the film. Wiseman had edited the film in secret, but this contract that he'd made there was not ever in writing. It was just a verbal contract, so it was kind of hazy there. Regardless, though, the film was only allowed to be shown to medical professionals or students. And of course, what was really going on, though, of course, was that a government-funded institution was being shown in a very negative light and they did not want that. So they tried to put their foot down and just stop it from being seen. There's a lot more to this story though. Honestly, we could probably do an entire video about this movie alone, but it is finally available, being selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry. All right, another UK banned documentary, Brave, Bashed, Battered, and Bruised. This is another fight-focused one, if you can't tell from the title. To put it bluntly, this is a martial arts doc with tons of footage of people just getting like knocked out and injured during crazy martial arts brawls. Pretty simple. And because of the nature of the doc, the British Board of Film Classification rejected the movie, saying it was, quote, selling the pleasures of gross violence through its unrelenting focus on the infliction of injury and pain. Yeah, this is before the UFC really took off. Doubt this movie would have had any issue getting released today. Next up, we have a documentary that was banned in Israel. The film was directed by Palestinian actor Mohammed Bakri. It features interviews with residents of the Jenin refugee camp after the events of Operation Defensive Shield in 2002, when Israeli defense forces invaded a Palestinian refugee camp about a month after 18 Israelis lost their lives in two separate attacks. But the Israeli government barred any journalists from entering the camp, so as for what went on during the operation, it was just word of mouth. And according to survivors, it had been an all-out massacre. 
Bakri snuck into Jenning with a camera in order to interview residents about what really went on. And according to them, many of the rumors that had been circulating turned out to be true. Most disturbingly, people's homes were demolished while they were still inside. In the end, 500 or possibly even more people at the camp lost their lives. The Israeli Film Council attempted to ban the film and initially didn't succeed. But just recently in 2021, the film ban was restored. Death of a Legend. This is a Canadian doc that was banned in the US, Florida in particular. What could the Canadians have done to get their film banned in Florida? I'm gonna tell you. This 1971 documentary made for the National Film Board of Canada is about wolves. It sheds a positive light on an animal that is often depicted as dangerous and evil. It teaches viewers about their life cycle and even shows footage of them being born. Well, parents started complaining when the film was shown in schools because there was a couple scenes of wolves uh, hooking up. Finally though, we have the Save the Children Fund film. This 1969 film was commissioned by the Save the Children Fund, a British-based charity. They hired director Ken Loach to undertake the project, but they did not like the finished product. The film ended up exposing some of the less than savory attitude the charity had towards some of the other cultures they were apparently there to help, and Ken Loach was just not a fan, so he set out to expose this kind of stuff. For example, he visited one of their institutions in Nairobi where kids weren't allowed to speak in their native language. There were some colonial aspects to the charity that came to light in the dock, and so when the higher-ups saw the film, they set out to have it banned, and they succeeded. The film was kept hidden away for years. It wasn't until 2011 when it was finally shown for a single screening, and since then there have been a handful of screenings here and there, but never uh, a wide release. With all that said though, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.